Hello and welcome! You just saw how to torpedo a Petropavlovsk. And we are in the sappiest destroyer in the game, which is of course the new tier 9 Italian destroyer, the Paolo Emilio. I really like this ship, I'm having a lot of fun in her. I wish I had her on my main account, but sadly I don't have the 43,000 research points necessary to actually get her yet, but I'm sure I'll get there eventually. She is dubbed the Yolo Emilio, because she is the fastest ship in the game. She goes up to 45.7 knots normally, but then she has a 25% speed boost. Now the speed boost does only last 65 seconds with the upgrade. However, that's more than enough to actually YOLO somebody. When you have the speed boost up, you can go up to 57 knots. Which is faster than a Kleber and a Marceau. And so you can get to the enemy faster than anything else. On top of that, she has an exhaust smoke. This is a smoke screen that completely covers you, just like the Italian cruisers, except now this is in a package with a destroyer and a destroyer with very powerful torpedoes. The Paolo Emilio's torpedoes deal almost 24,000 damage. They do only have six kilometer range. You have three sets, one set on each side and one set in the middle that can fire on both sides. Each set has four torpedoes. All of this combined means that the Paolo Emilio can rush down a ship like no other. And this makes her insanely fun. You look at the target and go, all right, I'm gonna sink that ship. And then a few minutes later, you have sunk that ship. And that kind of a feeling just, it's amazing, especially when you get these devastating strikes in. However, all of this must have some balancing factors. Number one on the Paolo Emilio, of the downsides is that she has a 7.1 kilometer concealment range. This is worse than virtually every destroyer she will run into. Not all of them, but almost everyone. And this means that you can't really play like a destroyer can for a lot of the things you do. You have to think slightly differently. Balancing factor number two would be that her firepower is limited. Now you might look at it and go, wow, the Polo Emilio has SAP and SAP should work incredibly well against destroyers. And it does to an extent. The Paolo Emilio hits like a truck. She has very good alpha damage. However, her DPM is fairly limited. It is base uh, DPM is about the same level as a Shimakas and a Yugumo. We're talking about 136k or so. Of course, you will spec her differently. You know, you will spec into the guns, unlike the Shimakas and Yugumo, so you should absolutely win gunfights against them. But if you run into, like, a small land, um, you're gonna have a bad time. And you need to keep this in mind when you play. However, when you're simply trading blows, that's completely fine. Her anti-air is also fairly limited. However, I am going to uh, push that Vladivostok. I tell my teammates that I will sink that Vladivostok. That they don't need to shoot that Vladivostok anymore. It's not really, I'm going to try to sink that Vladivostok. No, I am going to sink that Vladivostok. There will be no other possibilities. I start out by just rushing in towards her in a straight line. Unfortunately, my uh, speed boost has already run out, but that's okay. My uh, exhaust smoke lasts for quite a duration. So I launch one set on one of my sides. Then I turn my ship around so that I have the access to both of the other uh, torpedo sets. I do get spotted here for a bit, which does mean I'm probably going to take a salvo, but it'll be fine. I'm only going to lose some HP here, potentially. Goodbye, Vladivostok. And now we're also unspotted. See? One Vladivostok down. We did lose 10k HP, perhaps more than we should have. But I'm sure as I get better at this, I will get better at judging the distances you need to rush at. So, because of this kind of a rush capability, this ship is one of the easiest destroyers to play, but also one of the hardest, because it's very easy to rush in and sink one ship and trade. However, it's quite more difficult to rush in and survive with a lot of HP or perhaps without taking almost any damage. And that's certainly possible, like we did in, with this Vladivostok just now. You have to see these kinds of opportunities and take them. Now, one more downside on the ship is that her 
cooldown on the uh, consumables is fairly long, 140 seconds base on both of the both the uh, speed boost, which lasts for only for 65 seconds, and the smoke screen, which lasts for 40 odd seconds when you add up all of the things that increase the duration of it, which I recommend that you do. And once your consumables are used, you're kind of in a pickle, because what do you do then? Right now, I am engaging that Puman, because I figure, hey, I'm fairly healthy right now, and there are a lot of allies around me, I can probably get away with this. But you have to be able to judge these situations very well, because once you lose too much HP, you can't do all that much, because you can't uh, fall back on torpedoing from long range like virtually every other destroyer can. Even a Klebea can do that to some extent, whereas the Polio Emilio is going to have a lot of trouble doing that. Case in point, I'm not actually sure whether shooting that Pommen here was worth it. I lost 5k HP to that. Sure, we sank the Pommen, but I think my team would have managed even without me. And your HP pool is a resource that you need to have at least at a certain level, otherwise you're just going to be taken out. My RPF is straight ahead and I got spotted, so the Z23 is straight ahead from me. If I had very low HP, she could just finish me off, but luckily I do have enough. Oh, she's broadside on. This SAP salvo is gonna hurt. She's also smoking. I do need to keep far away enough just in case she has hydro. Let's just blind fire here, because I'm not gonna be spotted anyway. Oof, four shell hits. She's probably gonna be in the same spot. Let's try again. Come on. Oof, another six shells. Oh yes. Come on, one more. Come on, come on. We can hit her, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got her! Wow, in the smoke! She had 12,000 HP. Well, she had 17k HP, then I hit her for 5k. Then she smoked up. And then I blind fired the other 12k down. I guess this means B cap is free now. And uh, he uh, doesn't take kindly to my blind firing, apparently. Pure luck, no skill. But moving on. It's very difficult for me to evaluate how strong the Paula Emilia is. Because to me, she has felt superbly meh. Mediocre because the gunfire power is limited. And combine this with the poor concealment, and it ends up being rather difficult to do what a destroyer ought to do. To take caps, contest, fight other destroyers. However, yesterday I was playing some Paula Emilia, and this happened. Yep. That is 12 wins in a row. I was playing solo as well, by the way. So the ship must have something, or I just got supremely lucky. But it does feel to me that I can disrupt the gameplay of enemies. Perhaps that's because people simply don't know how the ship works yet. And because of that, I can get away with things I shouldn't get away with. Time will tell, I guess. Ooh, a Stalingrad. Oh, she's actually firing at me. But she's also broadside, so SAP should work really well here. Sorry, Stalingrad, not today. Oh, wait, what? Oh my god, Stalingrad's a lot faster than I expected here. I needed to lead that a lot more. Anyway, let's try to hide from the Stalingrad. Wait, why am I still spotted? Oh, oh, there's a Mogador over there. Whoops. Okay, it's fine. We're gonna dodge these shells and we're gonna cap, you know, it's three seconds to go. It'll be before the shells arrive. Okay, my friend just got hit, so it made us decap. Come on, I can dodge. Come on, three more seconds. We can do it. One, two seconds, two again, five. Oh, oh, come on, I just got hit. I hate you, Mogador, I hate you. Now we'll have to wait an extra 15 seconds. By the way, Mogador actually should be the uh, direct competition of the ship. She has about the same concealment, about the same speed. Torpedoes that are also very powerful. And uh, she's also tier nine, because this is actually something you have to keep in mind. The Paula Emilia is not actually a tier 10 ship. You should compare her to tier 9 ships. That's something I have some trouble with because, you know, I kind of just inherently want to compare her to tier 10 ships, but she isn't of that tier. Anyway, um, this Mogador can probably outgun fight me, and this is probably a mistake that I'm committing right now. I only have 8000 HP. Well, she used to have 12k, but now it's 11k. I can probably dodge quite a bit if I move as well, but... I think in the long term, the Mogador would come out the winner in this fight, even with my uh, allies helping me. 
I really wish to go over there. That's a full HP Yamato. That's some delicious, delicious damage waiting for me. But I only have 7k HP. And the rush here is going to be somewhat difficult as there is a Stalingrad over here. So it'll depend on the Stalingrad's mercy. Actually, Stalingrad might fire at me as well, so I'm just going to smoke here just in case. Let's do it early. Come on, Stalingrad, please don't radar, please don't radar, please don't radar. Okay, it seems to be working fine right now, although maybe she's simply turning her turrets. Like I am. Wait, did she just blind fire? Wow, she just blind fired me and hit me with multiple shells. Damn, I only have 3k HP. But Stalingrad, this also means I can return fire. Although only once, because on this ship you have to keep in mind your smoke firing penalty is 3.6 kilometers. So if you're rushing and fire your guns, you can mess yourself up. Oh, Yamato actually fired one of her turrets. This might make it easier. Smoke has run out, but we're already at 2.5 kilometers and... Come on, we can get these torpedoes in. Okay, one side has fired. Other side to go. Let's fire some guns in between. Come on, we can turn faster, 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 fast. Oh, wait, is that even necessary? Oh, <laughs> apparently, um, apparently it's not necessary. You can sink a full HP Yamato from Torps so from just one side. I guess uh, this is one of those reasons why Shimakaza feels pretty good. Now we get the capstone for free. Hey, well, if that Mogador survives for long enough, but if I know one thing about Mogadors and other French destroyers, it's that they survive for a damn long time. So I should be able to at least get this capstone. And I'm sure Mogador's gonna go down after that. Most of my games in the Paolo Emilia haven't been quite as good as this one. But uh, they have been pretty decent. Sometimes the damage numbers and all of that, they don't seem impressive. But you can also rush down ships like cruisers and destroyers. I mean, you saw I rammed the Petra Paolovsk at the start, right? Because, remember, once your torpedoes have run out, you still have one torpedo left, which is the ship herself. But this was a pretty damn good game. Two devastating strikes, 177k damage. At the end, the Yamato kindly donated a lot of that damage, sank three ships, captured three bases solo, and assisted in one entire capture as well. That is... Uh, that's some destroyer action right there. Wow, 2623 base XP, 1700 number two. You know, you have to keep in mind, Paula Emilia is a tier nine ship, which means that when you fight tier 10 ships, as you're often going to be fighting, you will get more XP. Now, you might wonder, what is the counter against the Paula Emilia rushing you? Well, when you see a sudden smoke screen appear and it's moving towards you, just turn around and sail the other direction. If the Paula Emilio can't get within range, chances are you're going to be fine, and you might even get the Paula Emilia in return. That Yamato, 81k damage just like that. Oh yeah, I should probably compliment the Stalingrad, he survived for a long time there. Wow, that Z23, he had just no luck whatsoever. 19k damage just from the SAP, and uh, his smokescreen actually helped me more than it helped her. But I did get very close to actually sinking this game. But I did get shot at by so many ships. Oh, and one of my torp tubes actually got permanent at the end there. But luckily, uh, I didn't need that one at that point anyway. So, is the ship worth the research points? I mean, for the fun factor, yes. But there are probably other research points ships you would like to get first. Uh, such as the Ohio. Not the Colbert though, I think this ship is more fun than the Colbert. So I did use Sansonetti in this game, but I don't think he's actually a good captain for the uh, Paolo Emilio. I think he's better served for your Italian cruisers. This game I did activate the ability which makes your consumables last longer, but this was at the very end. I have 102 shell hits, so it activated right when I basically sank that Yamato. Whereas the other one, I never got the Confederate that out of any of the games I played in the ship. And main battery firing range is a double-edged sword. So, Commander Skills, Priority Target, Last Stand, Survivability Expert, Concealment Expert. Then, a bit of a conundrum. You do want radio location and basic firing training, because you want your guns to be as powerful as possible. 
And because of your 7.1 kilometer concealment, you want the RPF to be able to tell where enemy destroyers are. Otherwise, you end up running into them head first with no warning at all, and then you can end up just going down very quickly. Here I ran into Z23, but I knew he was there because of RPF. But then the question is, do you take Adrenaline Rush or Expert Marksman? Because the turret traverse on this ship is very slow. It's uh, 18 seconds without Expert Marksman, but I have the upgrade which, which improves the turret traverse. And this kind of feels bad because you forego the uh, torpedo surviving better. But I do get um, Adrenaline Rush for it, and I think maybe Adrenaline Rush simply isn't worth it. So upgrades, main battery reload obviously, then concealment, because you're still a destroyer. Then I go for uh, rudder shift, because you have, you have enough acceleration and you don't slow down quite enough, whereas you do have over a 5 second rudder shift otherwise. Here I use the uh, turret traverse upgrade. Normally I would like to use the torpedo tubes, because of the minus 40% risk of torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated. I notice that my torpedo tubes do get broken a decent amount, sometimes even permanently broken. So it would be very nice to have that, however I think you must have either disability or expert marksman. Otherwise your turret traverse will be too slow, and ju that just doesn't feel good. Second slot obviously use the engine boost special upgrade, and if you don't have this one, then you probably should get one because you somehow managed to get 43,000 research points but not an engine boost. And first slot, obviously, main arms modification 1. So, with this setup, the Paula Emilia feels like a very fun ship. I would really like it if the turret traverse were slightly better and I could just drop this uh, turret traverse ability, but again, I understand this is a balancing factor. But the main thing, downside of the ship, I would say, is the recharge time of the consumables. 140 seconds base, with 133 when you, once you add in the flag. I kind of wish that they made the smoke screen last for slightly less time, however, uh, made the cooldown also faster. Because I feel that if you don't have your consumables up on the Paolo, Paolo Emilio, you can't do all that much because you need these consumables once you get into an even somewhat hairy situation. When you're spotted suddenly by a destroyer, you need to speed boost, either to get away from that destroyer as quickly as you can, or to close the gap to actually spot them. Uh, or, alternatively, you will have to blow your smoke, but then once you do that, what do you do then? Because once your smoke is down, you will have to wait over two minutes until you can go and engage anything. You would basically have to play as a gunboat, hiding behind islands, but you have the firepower of a Shimakaza? Yeah, that's not exactly, like, amazing. And you can't stealth torp on this ship. 6 kilometer torps with the 67 knot speed mean that, um, basically you can only torpedo either when you're spotted or if the ship is heading towards you and they're heading towards you at a rapid pace, right? Even Klebea ends up being better at uh, stealth torping than this ship, I think. And so, yeah. I think um, I would like it if her consumables reloaded faster, because I think once people learn how to counter the ship, she ends up being slightly less scary, but I mean, so far it has worked well, so perhaps she is fine as she is, you know? But yeah, 8.5 second reload, and remember, this is with BFT and the um, uh, reload upgrade both. You know, the uh, DPM on it is fairly low, sadly. I mean. Keep in mind, if your SAP DPM is uh, 135k base, actually when you add up all the upgrades it's about 170k, but imagine that, and then imagine your HE does like 33% less damage. Yeah, HE spam on this ship is not going to be much of a problem. Also the anti-air sadly is quite weak, so when you're in CV matches it's annoying because you can't use your smokescreen defensively, or if you do use your smokescreen defensively, well, again, you then can't do anything for two minutes because you don't have a smokescreen available. Anyway, the armor model is fairly standard, other than the fact that she has, like, Citadel armor, which is 60 millimeters, actually. I'm not really sure this is an advantage, though, because that might just mean that some AP shells get caught in it that would have normally overpanned. But overall, I think she's an incredibly fun ship, and uh, I will definitely try to get her, but then again, I have most of the other research uh, ships anyway, but uh, 
This match I played, I had already won quite a few of those games. I went on to play a few more and win a few more. I didn't actually lose a single time that evening, and I only played the ship. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.